Hi everybody, welcome, welcome to my channel. My name is Alice, if you are new here, thank you for being here. We're gonna do some guidance for the full moon, for the equinox, for the week ahead. So um, going forth from next week, I'm gonna be doing live videos and I just wanna say this super quick, but on Tuesdays on Instagram, you'll see me in the evening UK time doing live videos uh, card readings for people. On Fridays when this video will tend to go out on YouTube live, it'll be cross posted across Facebook, YouTube and um, Instagram. Um, so you can catch them wherever you find me. But um, And on Sundays we'll be doing pranic Sundays. So that will be uh, an exercise to help you um, hone your light and your powers and your abilities and your skills and your higher human self. So um, I just wanted to say that they're super quick because this is the week before the equinox and I'm coming live to you, well, recorded to you on a Thursday. So next week will be Friday. <laughs> but welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. Um, I just wanted to um, bring forth some guidance for this powerful full moon. It's the last full moon um, of the uh, of well, of the year, of the zodiac year, right? The energetical year. Uh, it's a full moon in Virgo. It parallels with the equinox as well. So we have two dates for the equinox, um, or maybe more, depends on who you ask. But um, there is the traditional equinox that people are aware of based on the Gregorian calendar. So based on the calendar system that we have and we use, that's the 20th, right? That's the Sunday. Um, if you actually go into the middle of Stonehenge and you look at where the sun is though, you'll find that the equinox is actually tonight, tomorrow morning. So that's super exciting. So we've got a full moon in Virgo, actually um, full and beaming her light out that is filled up by the sun as the sun aligns with the port of Stonehenge, right? So that's really, really powerful. Um, I've drawn some cards here that I'm going to be sharing with you and if you stay to the end I'm going to draw a card uh, for each the earth, air, fire and water signs so that you um, have some slightly more specific guidance than this uh, general guidance will bring but I hope it resonates and if it does please feel welcome to like, share, subscribe and uh, comment because I do love reading your comments. So first and foremost, wow the full moon, okay. People have been feeling it, I've been, I've been getting asked questions um, about um, you know, am I feeling the ascension symptoms? Am I feeling the grogginess, the tiredness, the weariness? Um, yes, I am, but I probably respond to it in a slightly different way to most people that are asking those questions, right? So um, the whole purpose of, you know, us being, we are energetic beings, we are light, right? But the physical form of me that you see, the physical form of you that you see, that is light that has been condensed, that you have drawn in all this light molecules, the sound, the light, the love, the everything to make up your physical form, right? To make up your physical form. So we've got multiple layers of our body. You know, we've got the mind body, the emotional body, the mental body. Oh, no, wait, that is the mind body. Astral body, physical body. We've got our soul, we've got our higher self. Right, we've got all these different layers and that's just a very, um, you've got the layers represent kind of a different dilutation. Is that a word? I'm going to make it a word if it's not. Um, a different condensation, collection of energy, like how, um, how much light you've brought in to be compact within, right? So... The mind body is formed of beliefs and patterns, energetical patterns that we have created, absorbed um, and practiced over time. Right? Our emotional body shows us whether we are in alignment with our highest self, with our true nature or whether we are um, acting from fear or believing something from a place of lack or, um, or there is a gap. Right. So the, the emotion shows where there is a gap between how we are embodying ourselves and where our truth, our higher self is. So if we're feeling kind of low, a bit funky, depressed, anxious, you know, various things. We could go into detail as to, you know, where that belief might be located. But what that is showing you is that there is a gap between what your actual truth is and how you are embodying yourself right now. And the same goes for when we get triggered or we get a bit annoyed by someone or, um, you know, if someone really rubs us up the wrong way and, you know, we feel really strongly about something in a very negative way they are showing us our truth they are embodying our truth and we are seeing something from a perception that isn't what we know to be true in our heart and our higher self that part of us that is source we are source energy god energy right um and that part of you might not believe that so that's how we get the lower energy and the, and the lower thought patterns and frustration things like that it's important to start off this video with that information because 
because the full moon, and as one of my friends describes it so eloquently and beautifully, the full moon, when we can see her in the sky, the sun is beaming his light, his illumination. He's filling her with his light. And she's becoming pregnant and full and vibrant. Right? My friend Melissa, she, she, she articulates this so beautifully, you know, and um, please do watch her videos because she's got such a gorgeous way of, of speaking and sharing and connecting with people. But this analogy came from her and oh, that's where I first heard it. And what happens then is that light reflects back down. So not only are we getting that light from the sun from one side, the moon from the other side, but that's like the mental, the physical body, the emotional body, the spiritual body, all lights are on us, right? So we feel more. We notice more our emotions. We can't hide from them. The spotlight's on them, right? And then obviously depending on where the sun is transiting and where the moon is transiting, we'll add a different layer. Now the moon is in Virgo right now. So there is a lot of, um, you know, self-worth things coming up. You know, how are we looking after ourselves? How are we taking care of ourselves? Where are our beliefs about victimization, right? Where are our beliefs about sovereignty versus victimization? Who holds the power? Who hold and power in the in the in the most beautiful sense? Not power is in control, but power is in will, determination, focus, and uh, and love. Right? Where is that? Um, and the sun is still in Pisces, only for a little while longer. And Pisces, you know that watery sign. They um, they have that fluidity between you know the the duality of this world, the polarity of the world, right? You know, they can find themselves um, edging into, you know, both kind of like swinging the pendulum from one side to another, you know, and especially when it comes to the spiritual realms, you know, a lot of um, guidance and spirituality. Um, I'm trying to get my words out here, but I'm struggling with words today a little bit. Maybe that's an ascension symptom. <laughs> um, but a lot of information comes through on the astral realms in dream world. Um, in your awake time, in how the world is relating to you, number sequences, animals, animal medicine, animal magic, right? Um, you know, what you're seeing and, you know, Pisces tends to notice that a little bit more, you know? Um, and then we have the equinox where there's equal day and equal night. So there's this emphasis on harmony and balance. So you are going to be experiencing, right? What you personally need to, in order to view and perceive and experience whatever is out of balance, right? So when we're experiencing fatigue, for example, weariness, you know, we're being invited by ourselves because it's only us that are inviting these feelings in, that are, we're, we're calling forth ascension within ourselves. We're calling forth all of our highest desires, right? You know, the love, the abundance, the, the freedom, the joy, the movement, the, the luxury of, of being, the sensuality of being, we're calling that forth, right? Collectively and individually, which is why we're going through such an interesting time, right? Because we, as humans, we don't need the contrast, but we usually prefer the contrast, right? So we, you know, we can choose to expand through, um, through being very aware and very present, but most people aren't there because we've forgotten. We've forgotten how to be that and how to do that. So we choose to see contrast instead. We choose to create uh, unconsciously, right? So when I say that, you know, we're not consciously going, I really want to create a really difficult situation because that's just going to help my soul grow. We don't say that. We don't know that. But that's what we're doing, right? That's what we're doing. We're calling ourselves out, right? We're calling ourselves out. So when we experience ascension symptoms, yes, we are going through an upgrade and yes, we must embody rest. But those that have been working with their divine feminine energy more will be more accustomed to feeling and noticing how we are and then acting accordingly and responding to that in love and compassion of self, right? So what that means is that if someone who has been working maybe a little bit more um, with their divine feminine um, energies and intuition and, and all of that and practicing, um, that will find a little bit more ease and grace, perhaps, not always, but perhaps, right? Because they're used to uh, connecting um, and feeling um, and responding to that, oh, I'm tired, oh, I need to rest, and actually stopping and, and resting, right? Because there is harmony and balance in masculine energy and feminine energy. We need both to be in balance, right? Just like we need many other things to be in balance in our life as well, you know? 
um, action, rest, you know, uh, giving, receiving, you know, it all needs to be in balance because if it's not, then we tip the scale in one way and we actually deplete ourselves of the other thing, right? So if you are someone who gives a lot, gives a lot, gives a lot, right? We can get to a point where we're giving too much. We're not receiving them because we've tipped the scale into distortion, right? So anyway, the whole point of um, of kind of what we're saying here is that, you know, with the equinox um, here as it is, we're in this massive portal, this massive gateway of opportunity, right? And, you know, we can't really do it wrong. I just want to say that we can't really do it wrong, right? We can't really do a full moon wrong, an equinox wrong, a solstice wrong. We can't do any of it wrong because however we choose to respond is exactly where we are. And we cannot rush things. We're not in competition with anyone else because we are all one. So that other person that you think, oh my God, they're doing so well. They're just like, you know, they're, they're getting this out and they're doing that. And, you know, they're, you know, they've created this, this and this. And it just seem like they've got their life together. And, you know, their kids are all amazing and they're sleeping through the night. My kids aren't sleeping through the night. What's going on here? You know, that's not a reflection on you. That's what each individual needs to experience because we don't know what they've gone through and what they are going through, right? Our perception is a really interesting thing because only we have it. Only I have my perception and only you have yours. So you'll never see completely eye to eye with another, but we can have a lot of fun in hearing and interpreting and sharing with one another. Right? So for this week ahead and for right now, if you're feeling like you need to rest, rest. If you're feeling like you have a lot of charge within you and you just feel like a bit, ooh, you know, discharge from that energy, get outside, move your body, release it in that way. Be creative, cook create, do something. I want to go straight into the cards that I've, uh, that I've drawn here, but I do just want to say I still have 20% off on everything on my website. If you are called to working with me one-to-one -one for any guidance, any support to connect with your teams of light, any quantum healing, right? Deep soul healing through different timelines, past life regression, priestess initiation, right? Womb awakening. Now's the time to book before Sunday because the prices go back to regular on um, on Sunday. So just wanted to say that. Uh, you can find all those at aliceheath.com as well. So um, I'm going to draw these cards or I'm going to show you because I've already, I drew them just before um, I recorded this video. So from the wonderful Nighttime Dreamtime deck. Such an apt card, isn't it? The first card that came out, Gateway, because that's where we're at. We are at a gateway, a portal, where you can manifest what you actually desire. And the way that we actually do that is we just let it come to us. People think manifestation is a very active approach where we have to go get something. That's not manifestation. That's forcing something. That's that's effort. True manifestation, you let it just come to you. You just you practice the releasing of the resistance. Right? So let it come to you. Let this time come to you. This energy come to you. You know, and when you do that, treasures await you in your dreams. What have you been what have you been dreaming about? What have you been daydreaming about, right? Sorry, I realized I was very close to the camera then. What have you been daydreaming about? I've been working with uh, different animals. Like, have you been working with the dolphins? Gosh, they bring so much joy. They're like the unicorns of the sea, that's what I say personally, but you know, because of how light-filled they are. Treasures await you in your dreams because that's where we need to be to actually bring it in. It's focusing on that. Where are we focusing our energy, right? Are we putting energy into past things that have happened that have been difficult, that we still find difficult? Are we still looking at them going, oh my gosh, that was so hard. I really didn't like that. This person's really done me wrong. Because if we do, guess what? We're creating that again and again and again and again. And that's going to come up in different people in different places, different times, different experiences again and again and again and again. What we want to do is we want to focus on the joy, the creation, the painting, the art, the singing, the dancing, the things that lift your heart up. And watch a comedy, you know, watch someone funny on telly if you need to. If you're if you're at that place where you can't get to, where you can't get to the singing and the dancing at this point, that's okay. Do something, do little steps. You don't have to jump from like, chum, chum. you don't have to do a massive jump. Just like, increase your mood bit by bit until you get to where you want to be right that could be having your favorite drink that could be having like you might really enjoy starbucks right and you might go and get your favorite drink and it might just really make you happy there are others that might say that it's not as healthy or is this this and this that doesn't matter if that's moving your vibration up a bit good because you create your reality not other people you create your reality not other people 
right? So do what you need to do to build up your vibration. And as long as it's something that is wholesome, that is not impacting negatively anyone else, then great, right? You know? And then finally, your dream guide is here to help you because you do, you have your angels, your guides, your, um, you know, ascended beings that are here to help you. You have a dream guide. Every night as you dream, your dream guide is working with your higher self to bring through what you need. So you might be doing a lot of healing in your dreams. You might not remember them right now. You might be experiencing, um, you know, you might be going through a lot of clearing in your dreams and you might wake up still feeling a bit tired, right? Go and absorb the sunlight afterwards. Have a wonderful shower and clear all that energy off, right? Because your dream guide is doing what you on a soul level, which isn't always, con it's usually not conscious to us. We and when I say conscious, once again, we usually don't know. We can't see it with our mind, with our, you know, we don't know it. Um, but we're calling ourselves out, right? We're calling ourselves out. So our higher self works with our dream guide. You may be shown really wonderful things. I had a beautiful dream last night. I was shown a future timeline and it was just so delightful and wonderful. And it just brought me such joy. I woke up and I was like, oh, that's arriving. That's being brought into, into reality, into physical manifestation. But a couple of nights earlier, oh my gosh, I was doing a lot of deep soul work. I was clearing on all levels and I woke up and I was like, wow, I feel angry still. Okay, I need to do something here to, to just sort myself out before I greet the world. I don't want to, I don't want to interact with another and, and then feel that, right? You know, so I'm taking due diligence for myself, my own energy and being sovereign in my own energy. And when you are sovereign in your energy, everyone else around you is. We all have a wonderful experience then. Does anyone else love these cards as well? I love the artwork. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the artwork. Coincidentally, Melissa is doing a call tonight. Um, Path of Spawn, it's a Magdalene call. It's a rose lineage. So if you resonate with a rose lineage with the Magdalene's, um, ancient Egypt, Atlantis, Avalon, um, Pleiades, right? Cygnus, any of that Hathor energy. If you resonate with any of that, she's doing a series of calls and tonight is Path of Spawn. So I've enrolled and I'm really excited for it because she holds a very sacred container. So... If that calls to you, I'll tag her in this video so that you can go on her page and find where that is. It's on her website, I think. So what are we moving through is the next thing. The next, I've drawn some more cards. Is the next thing that we're going to look at here. And this is the Queen of the Oracle deck. Queen of the Moon Oracle deck by Stacey DeMarco. So new beginnings, because that is exactly what we're at. We're at a new beginning. Once again, we've got the same cards here. Melissa's cards had a gateway. New beginning, a gateway, a portal, you know? That number two, divine feminine number, right? Also duality, right? You know, um, really seeing beauty in that. Understanding why it's so important. Power, power of the full moon. Look at look at her. Look at her, look at those all, all those constellations, those different light codes. Look at her, wow. Because you do have the power and this is what you're remembering. This is what you are um, downloading, right? This is what you're... You're being called to embody. And the realization, once again, through a keyhole, it's like you just have the key. You get the key. Number three. Who was on the 3-3 master key code workshop that I did? Wow, hey. To work for the seraphim in that way and to work with Yeshua and Mary Magdalene in that way and receive those key codes. The recording is still in my bio, by the way if anyone's called to that, but that three number, the merging of the masculine and the feminine to birth that golden, beautiful sun child. Wow. The realization as to who you are. That's what's happening. That's why this equinox, it's never been as powerful as it is right now. And I know you hear that a lot from various people, not just myself, but it's not. It's never been as powerful as it is right now. And this particular equinox, <sighs> the unicorns are coming in to join us, a comforting presence is on the way, because that's what's arriving with this equinox. Peace, peace is arriving. We might not see it tomorrow, <laughs> but it's arriving. We might have to experience more contrast first so that we can all really be resolute in our desire for peace rather than our curiosity as to anything else, right? But it's on its way. So it's a beautiful time. Be with loved ones, be with family, be on your own, whatever you, whatever you feel like you need to be doing, I'm going to be at Stonehenge. <laughs> I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there with that portal, with that land. Right? And I don't know how much I'm going to be interacting with other people because that's time for me. 
and I do a lot of that. I do a lot of interacting with people and I love it. I love people. I love humans. I love the experience of co-creation, but I also love my alone time. I love my connection with myself and my connection with my team of like, like making a nice pot of tea and I just have a sit down and a good old chat with my team of like, <laughs> don't know if anyone else does that. But anyway, before we go, I'm just going to draw, uh, I'm just going to share with you um, a card of guidance for each of the um, sign. So if you are a, a sun, moon, rising, especially if you're a sun or rising sign for earth, air, fire, water. So earth, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, your guidance is illumination. This conscious vision, this, look at this, this ascension, this enlightenment. It's just going to be, it's going to be illuminated by the moon and by the sun right now, especially the moon, especially this moon. Illumination, new ideas ways forward, consciously co-creating earth signs. That's that's what's happening for you right now. So that's specifically Taurus, Capricorn and Virgo. Sun rising and moon as well. Why not? Air, ah, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Oh, you've got Magdalene de la Mer. Wow. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Go forward and leave the past behind. Stop thinking of the past. Air signs, you can get very caught up in your mind, right? Because that's where you excel. Is the thoughts, is the seeing every perspective and balancing it all out and let it go. Let the past go. Let the past go. Easier said than done. I know I can hear someone saying that. Easier said than done. And we do that once again by just moving into joy. What find like focus on where the joy is, right? If you find yourself um moving into a thought pattern that isn't really the most fun. You don't need to be there. You definitely don't need to be there. You know, you can shift that focus. You can go, oh, okay, well, that that wasn't a very nice thought to have. Okay, well, what if I change this in my thoughts? So if you've, you know, if there is a situation in your mind that keeps replaying, change it bit by bit. Just change something bit by bit. So instead of, you know, some fear or danger coming at you, you know, it changes to something funny to bring a bit of humor in. If you're struggling, if you're struggling in a thought pattern or simply, you know, do something very random to distract yourself. I know you're very good, usually at kind of flitting through different things and juggling um, different ideas. So leave the past behind. It's time to create from your joyful desires and thoughts. Not, any, not anywhere else. You're worth more than that. So we've got earth, air, fire, fire signs, Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo. Mm. Disconnect and go underground for a while. So this is a Hopi prophecy. Look at them dancing, moving, you know. There's a lot of energy coming through right now, especially as we go into Aries season, right? It, you might be feeling really electrically charged. Just rest, go underground, go like, just find that womb that that place where you can just like cocoon yourself you're always go 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 fire signs you're always you know very like you know very <sighs> passionate and that's great but be passionate about you right now be passionate about you and what you need so if there's ever a time to kind of incubate a little bit now's the time Now's the time so that you can receive because of the solar flares that are coming in, the key codes that are coming in, fire signs, you may be finding that they're affecting you a little bit more powerfully or in a different way. You're experiencing it in a different way than other signs are. We're all experiencing the same thing, but we, we translate it differently, right? By where our point of attraction is and that connects very deeply with our natal chart, right? With our natal chart. And finally, water signs, Scorpio, Pisces and... Cancer. You hold in your heart a space to be filled, empty nest. Look at this. Look at this beautiful, open hearted um, woman. She's bearing all. She's vulnerable in her in her chest area. Her breasts are out. That's where the milk, the nourishing life force comes from, from a woman. Right. Is the breast. We nourish with that milk. You know, this isn't an over sexualized time right of distortion this is a, a bareness of beauty the radiance of your heart allow your heart to be seen water signs we can get a little bit guarded 
I say we because I have a very strong water placement in my chart. So I do understand, especially the Scorpios out there. But we can oftentimes be very focused on others because we can see, right? The water signs, you can see very clearly the energetic fields, the veils around others. But in so doing, we sometimes pull the cloth over our own heart, guard it. Now is the time to open your heart space and let your chalice be filled. That's your focus, water signs. So cancer, let that shell, let that shell that protects you. Don't hunch it over, let it open. Pisces, you see it all, but let it open. Scorpio, you can go easily down into the depths, the deep, deep depths of the shadows. And that's okay, but bring the light down there and open your own heart. So beautiful beings of light, thank you so much for joining me. If this resonates, do share it with people. You know, invite people to the channel. I love meeting new people. And like I say, if you do want to get the most of that 20% off that's until Sunday, visit my website, aliceheath.com. But in the meantime, I send you all so much love so many blessings and that last deck of cards as well sorry was art through the star stream oracle by cheryl yambrack rose okay. so much love bye for now and happy full moon happy equinox i'll see you on sunday for some sun gazing <laughs>